take. It's not all leading along or dragging or pushing somebody, but it's going to take some, uh, some good following, and it implies a good relationship. It also implies rank. Following implies rank. There's somebody who's in charge. Uh, you've lived any time at all, you realize that not all the times you're in charge. There's generally somebody else that calls that shot or pushes that button or, if you please, signs your check. And a lot of times we get into uh, uh, meetings, working with people, contracts, and, 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 and uh, certain jobs. And so we, uh, they always have an liaison or have somebody there that you want to talk to. And they say, well, yeah, they talk a whole big, big game. You think you're talking to the guy. And they said, well, I'll have to run that past my boss. I said, that's who I needed to be talking to. I want the guy who writes the check. Who writes your check? That's who I want to talk to. Oh, okay. I said, because that's the guy who makes the decisions. And so uh, a lot of times you have to get that pretty clear, but it implies rank. There's always somebody higher than you or me. The same is true in the Lord's army. Every child of God is underranked Jesus Christ. They're under Jesus Christ. Uh, he's responsible for following him in, in his plan in their lives. You say, well, I, I thought that I called the shot. You do you call the shots, but you should be following Jesus Christ. That's who we're under. He's the chief uh, shepherd. He's the chief cornerstone. So it implies rank. A good follower understands rank and how it works. A good soldier does this. It implies rules. Why? Well, I don't like rule. I don't like rules. Well, a lot of people don't. It's because the way they were raised, their makeup, their character, and how it is. But let me tell you something. Just in the carnal sense, dealing with the world, living in the world, having a job in the world, you know there's rules where you work. Uh, if I work for you, for instance, and you pay me a certain wage by the hour, you would expect me, and probably part of my job requirement written down would be, you need to show up at a certain time, and you need to be willing to leave at a certain time, especially if it's by the hour. It might be a salary, and they might expect you to be there 70 hours a week instead of 40. Well, be careful the salary position. That's what happens sometimes. But uh, nonetheless, you still have rules, and you have time slotments, but uh, here in the same thing in the Bible, it's funny when we step over into the Christian world, people think there should be no rules. Somebody's been lying to you. <laughs> Somebody's been lying to you. Somebody's been feeding you a line and don't be careful of that. A good soldier understands this and it implies rule. To refuse to follow orders is treason in the army. Uh, I could speak to some men that have been in the military. When you refuse to do a direct order, I don't think they say, well, I'll ask the next guy next to you. That doesn't, that's not the way that it happens, uh, from my understanding, in the movies I've watched. Now, that's just not how it works. That's not how it works. They're going to they're gonna take it to you. You need to understand some things. Same thing in the Christian field. Notice the call of Christ that has not changed. You find this in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. We're going to move on. When we refuse to live as the Lord desires, then we have crossed the line from a follower to a traitor. So I didn't think I would ever be in the category of a traitor. Has God knocked on your heart, the Holy Spirit? You know, if you're his child, he surely has at some point. Uh, he's knocked on, he said, hey, uh, you don't need to be doing that. Uh, hey, look at this verse over here. This is something you might need to be doing. Well, when you refuse to ignore the guidance and the light that the Holy Spirit gives you and I, you're, you're not a follower. We're not a follower. I'm not a follower. I'm a traitor. And this is not a sign of a good soldier. You know, a good soldier will follow orders and listen. And so we find this. You can write down in your notes. James chapter 4 and verse 17 states that about a follower, a true follower, and a traitor. Now we see, secondly, not only is he a good follower, a good soldier, but uh, we see here in our text, go back to our text. Notice with me verses 3 and 4. He is faithful, he is faithful, and you can see this, and he lays this out here. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus, Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now watch, watch chapter 4, he says, I'm going to go over there, he says, look, he says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry, for I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departures at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. 
Faith is, uh, is what God had commissioned the Apostle Paul to do. But you see here that he was faithful in his duties as he outlined them. A good soldier is going to be faithful in his duties. Two things that stand out to me here in verse 3. He says, endure hardness as a soldier. That speaks of our patience. That speaks of a good soldier's patience. You're going to have to have some patience. Uh, somebody who endures hardship and does not quit. A good soldier realizes that uh, there will be troubles along the way. And in this life and in the Christian life, there's going to be troubles that rise. But you're going to have hope. You're going to have the peace that passeth all understandings if you're a good soldier and you know that Christ is always with you. And so here we see that uh, a faithful soldier, a good soldier, he's going to have some patience about him. He said, man, I'm not, I'm not big on patience. Well, in some areas of your life, you probably are. You probably, probably have some patience, especially with yourself. I know I do. I have a lot of patience with myself, but when it comes to somebody else, it's a whole lot shorter or something happens to it. Uh, it's not there. But here, a good soldier is going to have some patience because of the job that God has called him or commissioned him to do. And so you, you find that, right? John 16, uh, verse 33 speaks of the faithfulness and the patience that a good soldier has. Now we see here, uh, look at verse 4, back in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Now you're going to see that, uh, number one, what Paul is saying here, that a good soldier is going to know the difference between the world and the affairs of this life and what he's been told or commissioned to do. Now, we have taught and we have preached and we will continue to preach and teach on the will of God. The will of God is the same for every one of us sitting here tonight if you're saved. If you're lost and you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, it will be so confusing, uh, it, it's going to make you upset or mad. You say, I'm out, I quit. But with the Holy Spirit, there's enlightenment. There's illumination there, and he's going to say, this is the right way to go. And so we see here that his priorities, he understands his priorities, seeks to please the commander. Tonight, when I ask, are you a good soldier? Am I a good soldier? That's one of the things that you have to ask yourself, is your priorities right? We speak of our priorities, Christ first, God first, if you please. Then you have family second, you have ministry third, and so on and so forth. But in your life, a lot of times we get our job, our work, uh, we get our businesses, we get our career, uh, we get our, our, our hobbies, our talents, everything above what God told us to put in place. And that's Him. That's His commission to, uh, to us. Uh, Andrew is telling us right here that we need to understand not to be entangled with the affairs of this life because it sure is going to have a lot of them. And you just look around. You say, well, I don't know how, how attached I am. When the, when the male person, the male lady comes by, the mailman comes by, you look at all those bills, all those attachments we have. I got a lot of them. Those are called attachments. You have obligations that you need a couple jobs to pay for. Those are called attachments. You got other attachments too that, that you probably don't need. And there's some attachments that you're going to need. But what the Apostle Paul is saying here, listen, be careful. Don't get entangled with the affairs of this life. So here we see not only his patience and his faithfulness, but his priorities uh, are right. Who comes first in your life? I heard a preacher say, get out your checkbook. You're going to find out who comes first in your life as to who all the checks are written to or for. And uh, that's a sobering thought, especially when it comes to my checkbook. Uh, that's a sobering thought. But you see here in priorities, whatever or whoever it is, uh, that is our God. He's telling us, he tell, he's not just telling me, he's not just telling Pastor Tom or the deacon or whoever, he's telling all of us that we need to be good soldiers. I'm asking tonight, a good soldier is faithful. Are you faithful? Are you faithful to the commander? So we see uh, something else here thirdly in number five. Look at verse five with me. Chapter four, verse five, Second Timothy chapter four, verse five. He says, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. I'm going to say he's familiar. Uh, we're going to write this down in three categories. He's familiar. A good soldier is familiar, number one, with the sound of his commander's voice. Well, I don't know if, if God's really telling me this. 
You know, I pray, I just don't know what the will of God is. Remember, we already know what the will of God is. The Bible tells us what the will of God is. Well, I don't know quite what the plan of God is. Do the will of God, and the plan of God will be revealed. But you know, you can hear, uh, your commander, your chief, uh, the, the, the chief shepherd giving you the orders. And John, let's turn over there. John, watch this, and what he says himself about his, his uh, soldiers, or if you please, his sheep. And he uses us and likens us, you and I, save people as sheep. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, notice with me in verses 3 and 5. He says, To him uh, the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. He gets some, well, i got to watch what I say. He gets some rascal. That's trying to tell you, well, it doesn't matter. You know, you're saved. You can set, soak, and sire, stay in darkness. Listen, you show me a verse on that. Show me a verse on that. Show me five, and I'll show you ten. I'll show you ten more where it says stuff like this. He leadeth them out. Uh, sheep hear his voice. Verse three, and he calleth his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him. Well, the guy who wrote this might be a liar. That's Jesus Christ himself. That is our commander. Watch it. Verse four, for they know his voice and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him for they are not the voice of strangers. Well, I don't know. I, uh, well, I believe in relative truth right about here. And this is kind of the sound song that we hear. And it, be careful of that. Be careful of that. Stick with the Bible. Stick with the book. We see here, first of all, that a good soldier is going to hear the sound of the commander's voice. Secondly, we see not only that he's familiar with the commander's voice, but he's familiar with the skill of using his weapon. And we just kind of... Uh, looked at this, but notice with me in Ephesians. Ephesians, uh, we're going to see something here that is very important to uh, you and I as Christians. You say, well, man, I'm struggling with this, uh, being a soldier, I'm struggling with some of this stuff. What is, what, is this really real? This is really real. And by the way, not only is this real, but you have an adversary that don't care whether you know it's real or not. No matter if, he, if you're living in relative truth or you're living in reality, he's going to go after you and he's going to eat you. That's what he's going to do. And he's going to eat me if I let him. And so however lame we want to walk through this Christian life, that's you and me. That's all of us. And that's the church down the road and any other church you want to put under it. If you want to tiptoe through this life, Satan loves it. He loves it, and he will eat you and I and devour us. But notice here, a good soldier, he's going to have the skill. He's going to know the weapon that he has. Ephesians chapter 6, notice, notice with me in verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You say, man, the devil just gets the best at me, and I don't know what, I don't, for the life of me, I don't know what it is. You're not living in the victory that God has given you. He's telling you, you need to put on the whole armor of God. Or the devil knows your weaknesses. He knows right where to throw that dart. And, uh, and then if he doesn't need a dart, he can bamboozle you into thinking that this isn't real. Uh, and, and so I'm here to tell you I've got more important things. Pastors got more important things. Preachers have more important things to do than to yap their mouth up here about this. This is real. This is going on. This is what you deal with. But this is, we've got one more thing here with his familiar. He's familiar with the sound of his commander. Uh, he's familiar with the skill of using his weapon. That, by the way, is the word of God. Uh, that's the sword. And so you'll find more about that if you read, read Ephesians chapter 6 and, that, and on to the end. But thirdly, with the strategy of the enemy. I want to get to this part. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 4 speaks of this. Listen, take your Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Satan takes this real. Your adversary is going to take it real. Now watch this. There are certain things uh, that I'm going to hold to and preachers are going to hold to, pastors are going to hold to because of what the Bible simply comes out and says. So when somebody's throwing me a line with a, with a bait on it, 
Well, it doesn't matter how it's preached or who's preaching what or what's going on. Look, these are verses that I think of. I'm thinking, how dumb is this person? Okay, let's read this. 2 Corinthians chapter, I hope you have a Bible tonight and you're paying attention. Watch this. Verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel. What? For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Who's this epistle written to? Somebody help me out here. To a carnal church. Well, they don't need to hear about all that. They're, this was a carnal church. This was not a strong, spiritually established church. And the Apostle Paul, the same one we're following tonight, be a good soldier. Are you a good soldier? Are you familiar with some things? Here, he's saying, look, you need to be familiar with some of this stuff. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Now watch this. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Wow. You think they know what they're doing? They know exactly what they're doing. And we'll leave it at that. But you need to be familiar with who you're up against. Not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, according to Matthew, is going to enter into heaven and will be cast out into utter darkness. And they're going to state and declare to Lord Jesus Christ that we preached in your name. We prophesied in your name. We cast out Satan in your name. And he said, I never knew you. Get out of here. He said, wow, that's hard. Now, we'll go back to the first verse. Go back to 2 Timothy. Now we're going to put a little more color to this verse here. Uh, 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy won't work. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now watch this. Verse 3. Look at that again. Thou, therefore... Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You think you, one of the toughest things that you ever find yourself doing is either witnessing to your family member that needs Christ or witnessing to a religious person that thinks they're going to heaven and they're not. That's the hardest thing to do. I'd take, I'd take a person who don't know nothing about Jesus Christ day, day, day to, seven days to one. And the reason why is because religion, just what we just read, because of ministers of righteousness, damn souls to hell. And he's saying, look, you need to be aware of your enemy's strategy. And so now when we look at this verse, thou therefore endure hardness, you think it's pretty hard to witness to somebody that thinks they already have the right answer? Do you think it's going to be easy to talk to somebody about salvation, the right salvation, because somebody's already damned their, whole, their soul to a devil's hell? I know I'm saved. I got baptized. I got baptized. Nothing about accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Baptism has nothing to do with it. And here we're finding that there's something else about a good soldier. Notice with me, he's a fighter. He's a fighter. Paul makes three statements here. I'm watching the clock. We got plenty of time. Uh, so he says here, number one, he's a fighter. He is determined. You find this that he's a determined soldier. He does not retreat in the face of the enemy. He does not run from a fight. Instead, he stands his ground and fights the battle until the battle is over. I'm here to tell you tonight, it's not over. The, the dinner barrel hasn't rung. It's not over. We're still in a fight. I understand somebody says something, get your nose out of joint, and you whine and cry. A good soldier doesn't do that. Listen, he's determined. Secondly, he's driven. He's driven because he knows who he's fighting for. He knows who his commander is, and he's a good soldier. He's a fighter. And lastly, he's dedicated. Now, when we ask ourselves tonight, you and I, I begin to look at this and put this together, thinking, am I a good soldier? I'm a deserter, man. I deserve to be hung. Looking at this and what Paul has laid out, uh, he's a dedicated man. Lastly, uh, he's a finisher. Write down in your notes, he's a finisher. He has resolve, uh, he has reason, and he has a reward that God's going to give him. And we read the verse there in 2 Timothy chapter 4 that God's going to give not only the apostle Paul, but all them, all them uh, that uh, love his appearing. But a good soldier finishes well. He finishes his course, according to Paul, because he knows every deed uh, will be rewarded by, by his commander-in-chief. So as we stand tonight, I want you to think 
I know everybody pretty much here. Everybody, let's all stand. I'm, I'm finished. We're going to uh, ask ourselves about being a soldier. You're a soldier whether you like it or not. If you're saved. See, while I choose not to engage, I choose to be passive aggressive because that's just my nature. Um, I'm not forward or bold. Um, uh, I understand we have an enemy. Uh, I understand, you know, how this thing's laid out. I hear it. I hear it loud and clear, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of choose my own way. And you can do that, and about 90% of us have done that here. But I want to ask you another question about being a soldier. How's that working out for you? How's your fruit? How's your family? How's your friends? How's your faith? See, when you choose our way, you and I choose our way, we understand what God's done for us. We got salvation. That's a sealed deal, man. But when it, when it comes to stepping up to service and realizing where you're at, your enemy, what you're looking at, where you're headed, we can get it when it comes to dieting. We got it down, man. It works. It works. We can get it when it comes to training, physical training. We get it when it comes to spiritual and even mental, uh, mental training. We got it. We talk to the best doctors, we, we have the best prescribed situation and how they want to lay everything out, but how about, how about it when it comes to your spiritual side? Do you have the answers for that? Is it laid out like we've looked tonight? And then, if you can't answer that question, you're going to have to at some point, it's probably going to be in a storm or it's probably going to be in a crisis that you're going to have to come to reality with whether you're a good soldier or you're not a good soldier tonight. I challenge you, step up be a better soldier. I want to be a better soldier. Let's hope we have the same mindset and the same heart set because we have an enemy and he's coming hard and uh, he's good at what he does.